When somebody gets shot, that's news. When somebody doesn't get shot, that's not news. If I see a black person on TV, it's usually about a crime that they have committed. Five-year-old Leslie Beasley is scheduled to be executed on December 2nd. They were actually making me scared of my own people. You know, there was a fear being instilled in me very young when watching the news. It's just the business. That's the way the business was organized. It, it was a way to generate viewers. And viewers are mostly in the suburbs. And so you can get eyeballs watching your show if you show people like you getting victimized. At WABC TV, the director of news and public affairs is Albert Primo. Al Primo generally is credited with having invented the eyewitness news type format. I started eyewitness news in the year 1965. By two-way radio, the desk directs movements of news crews throughout the city. The assignment editor has to know what's happening and where it's happening. To live up to the name eyewitness, news teams have to be out where the action is, to provide a more personal and comprehensive report from the field. The minute we put the eyewitness news format into place, the ratings started increasing. Increased rating means increased revenue. And then along uh, comes Action News. But the big story on Action News, with those words, Action News debuted on April 6th, 1970. With Larry Kane, Bill White, and Frank Gable. It was fast and funny, bloody, and quick. The flash of blue lights, you know, the sheet over the body bag. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll watch him die. And it was definitely an attempt to get some leadership over Eyewitness News. We were not nearly as diverse back then as we are today. I'm trying to think if, if there was a single black anchor. I, I can't remember one. So once a month I had to talk to a community leader about what he or she thought were problems. What it did uh, for me was to really highlight the fact that there was no you know, no minority uh, representation on, uh, on the station. And so I began to look around for someone who was qualified to, to join the team. That was in 1965 when they called me in Detroit and asked me would I like to come to Philadelphia. This was still a man's profession. We didn't know there was another color but white because that's all that we had at the station at that time. It was quite obvious. We needed to tell our own stories about our own people. They're part of the American culture. And sure, they had everything happening to them that was happening to anyone else. And so why shouldn't they be covered? Why shouldn't their lives also be counted? Sometimes, some given days, the only black people you'd see on TV were criminals or, or ball players. you know? Well, I covered hard breaking news from crime to Three Mile Island. My philosophy was that I always uh, worked hard to be balanced and give, in many cases, a black perspective. For friends, then sends her sensational hit, New Attitude. I'm Vernon Odom. Join me this Saturday night at 7.30 on Vision. Channel 6 developed a minority advisory board and became a better balance of coverage to the black community. The Junkanoo Pat is the sound of the Bahamas, a little distinctive from the rest of the Caribbean and different different from reggae, but it's hot, scintillating, and completely festive. When I went out on the story, I did what I thought the story should be about. And I made a point when they were edited to include whatever our brown story was, to include that in my story as a part of the picture of what happened. Covering the news is one thing. Making it all fit is something else. Editorial judgment deciding what will or will not go in any news program. In the daily decisions on what's going to get covered on the news, it is vastly important to have some people who understand what's going on out there. Suburbanites, particularly white ones, don't live in the world that black or brown people live in in the inner city. They, they don't have that perspective. 
and they can tend to easily overlook it when that is not brought up to them regularly. Just as it was true nationally, uh, crime in Philadelphia started to go down uh, in the early 90s. So it was like 20% lower than it had been in the peak uh, by 1994. And by 1998, it was already like over 40% lower than it had been in the late 80s, early 90s. So crime was actually going down. But what was happening on local TV news is you wouldn't know that because anywhere from 18 to 24% of local news on any given night was dedicated to crime in the city. And when you then look at, well, what's being covered in these crime stories, um, you see persons of color much more uh, uh, frequently featured in those stories than they were in the rest of the news, like twice as much. This format is specifically geared toward telling the pain and tragedy of these communities without any real attempt to provide a greater context for the everyday lived experience in these communities. The coverage, we think, uh, of crime on local TV news was a factor in creating fear between people, leading to other kinds of political problems like the need for um, harsher sentencing, more police, war on drugs. This man we'll call Robert came forward tonight to help police catch the person he says was behind the Tuesday night robbing and beating of a distressed motorist who had just narrowly escaped a 50-foot fall from the Strawberry Mansion Bridge. When you watch the news, what's, it's all negative. It's like going to be like, oh, when I turn on the news, I'm going to be depressed, you know. And then I'm definitely going to be depressed because everything negative on the news is going to be about black people. Shoved me really hard towards the ground. And, you know, that's always been problematic. How else can I portray my people? Some of the coverage always makes people, um, specifically black and brown people, look violent. The dichotomy with the industry right now, particularly with changes, is that you have a larger shift of more newsrooms trying to do more hyper-local, more engaged journalism practices. My advice to my beloved family at 6ABC, at CBS3, Fox 29, you know, all the mainstream media is to inject the good. Today we are here at the gun violence press conference, a very heavy one. Councilman Curtis Jones is with me. Can you tell me, I know that we are now putting a lot of money into community resources, but do you know any who specifically deal with conflict resolution? Meet community game changers. We're shining a light on individuals making a big difference in the African American community. Today's Game Changer, a West Philadelphia business owner transforming a drug corner into a community hub. So I had been the community affairs reporter at KYW, and a few years into that job is when I decided that we needed a space that gave us the breathing room to talk about complicated issues. On Flashpoint, um, we'll be talking about the other side of the opioid epidemic. Hey guys. It was my privilege to cover black people and to show us in a light, you know, that I see us.